Pink Z1 is a Silynx FPGA board that features an ARM Cortex A9 processor, enabling it to run a full Linux operating system. This makes it similar to single board computers like the Raspberry Pi, but with the added power of programmable hardware through its on-chip FPGA. So the concept of using a single board computer and Linux is also similar on this board. This is the Pink Z1, one of the Zinc boards designed specifically for use with Pink Framework. You can purchase it from Digilent. It is available in different variants, either just the board or bundled with accessories like a micro SD card, Ethernet cable, USB cable, and power supply. You'll need the micro SD card, Ethernet cable, and USB cable to get started. The power supply is optional, as the board can also be powered via USB. For the micro SD card, if you purchase it separately, make sure not to buy one with a capacity greater than 32 gigabytes. Cards above 32 gigabytes use the SDXC, which is not supported by the Zinc board, so the maximum supported capacity is 32 gigabytes. Depending on your laptop, you may also need a USB card reader to flash the OS image onto the micro SD card. This is only needed once just to prepare the card. If your laptop already has a built in micro SD card reader, you can simply plug the card directly into your laptop. Next, go to the Pink website and download the OS image. Wait until the download is complete. Then, you'll need a tool called Balina Etcher. This software is used to flash the OS image onto the micro SD card. Once the download is complete, you can proceed with flashing the micro SD card. Start Balena Etcher, then insert your micro SD card into your laptop or computer. Open the image file you just downloaded. Select the target device. Make sure to choose the correct drive, as the process will erase its contents. Finally, click the Flash button to begin. Wait until the flashing process is finished. After the flashing process is complete, you're ready to boot up the board. Make sure Jumper 1 is set to the top position to select Boot from the micro SD card. Set Jumper 2 to the bottom position to power the board via USB instead of an external power supply. Insert the micro SD card, connect the USB and the Ethernet cables to your laptop, and finally, turn on the power switch. To access the Linux terminal from your laptop, you'll need software like Putty or Mobex Term. I personally use Mobex Term because it also includes features for uploading and downloading files to your board via FTP. You can download it for free from the official website. This is Mobex Term after I've installed it. Your sidebar might look different, as mine shows previous connections to other boards. Now turn on the board. On Windows, you can check the COM port by going to Device Manager. Once you identify the correct COM port, for example, COM13, yours may be different. Create a new session in Mobex Term Select the serial option, choose your COM port, and set the baud rate to 115,200. Depending on when you turn on the board, the boot process may have already finished. Press Enter to check. Here, we are logged in to the Linux terminal via serial communication. The LEDs on the board should be blinking like this once the board has finished booting. You can rename this connection to something meaningful so that next time you want to connect, you can simply double-click it. You can execute the ifconfig command to check the IP address of the board. On a pink system, the
the Ethernet interface usually has two IP addresses. The first one may not be set, while the second is a static IP assigned by default. You can connect to the board by directly connecting an Ethernet cable between the board and your laptop. Alternatively, connecting through an Ethernet switch is also possible if needed. On Windows, make sure to set a static IP address for your laptop. Go to the View Network Connections menu, right-click the Ethernet interface, and set the IP address to a value like .1 or .100. Avoid setting it to 99, as that would conflict with the default IP address of the board. Open the command prompt to test the connection by using the ping command. It should return a response similar to this. Now we can try connecting to the Linux terminal via the Ethernet connection instead of the USB serial connection we used earlier. Enter the board's IP address, and when prompted, use Xilinx as both the username and the password. So now we are in the Linux terminal, but this time the connection is through Ethernet. It also opens the file explorer for the board, meaning the folders you see in the terminal are the same ones accessible through the file explorer. You can upload or download files to and from the board using this explorer. This will be useful for uploading the FPGA bitstream file that will be programmed into the FPGA. You can also rename the connection to something meaningful, so it's easier to identify the next time you want to connect. Now, we can connect to the Jupyter Notebook interface using a web browser. Type the IP address of your board followed by the port number. Enter the password Xilinx. This will open the Jupyter Notebook running on your board, specifically on the ARM processor. One important thing to remember is the proper shutdown process. It's recommended to shut down the system from the terminal rather than turning off the power switch directly. Why? Because the board runs a Linux operating system stored on the micro SD card, which uses a file system. If you power it off abruptly using the switch, the micro SD card can become corrupted or even fail entirely, depending on its quality. Think of it like your laptop. If you shut it down every day by holding the power button instead of using the proper shutdown option, eventually your Windows OS might experience errors or corruption. So, to shut it down properly, use this command. Do you want to learn AI acceleration on FPGA? This project-based online course offers practical insights into designing AI accelerators, specifically a CNN algorithm for handwritten digit classification. The focus of the course is on the system design level on how to integrate a CNN module written in Verilog HDL with the application processor running Linux. The final result of this project is a web application for taking a handwritten digit and then sending this data to be processed with the CNN accelerator on the FPGA. On average, a speed-up factor of 12 times is achieved by using this accelerator compared to the CPU. The next thing you may need is to connect your board to the internet. Below is the current IP configuration of my board. As you can see, it is not yet connected to the internet. 
when I try to ping Google's DNS server 8.8.8.8.8, it returns an error, which confirms there's no internet access. Internet access may be necessary if you want to install Python libraries using pip, or to perform system updates and downloads directly from the board. There are several ways to connect the board to the internet. For example, you can connect it directly to a router that already has internet access, as shown in this diagram. However, in my case, I'm using internet sharing. Since my laptop is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi, we can share that Wi-Fi connection with the board through the ethernet cable that's already connected to it. I'll show you how to configure the settings in Windows. First, go to the View Network Connections menu. Find your Wi-Fi connection, right-click on it, and select the Sharing tab. Then check the box, Allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. From the drop-down menu, choose the Ethernet adapter that is connected to your board. Once you click OK, you'll receive a warning that the IP address of the Ethernet adapter will be changed. Click Yes to proceed. After this, your terminal connection to the board will be disconnected. This happens because the board's IP address has changed as a result of the sharing configuration. To reconnect, you can use the USB serial connection. This is why the USB serial connection is sometimes very useful, especially when the Ethernet configuration changes and the IP address becomes unknown. If you type ifconfig, you'll see that the Ethernet interface now has a different IP address, a dynamic IP assigned by your laptop. You can use the command line to ping this IP to ensure the connection is active. Now, the most important part, your board is already connected to the internet. You can verify this by pinging a public DNS server like Google's. You can also use this new IP address to access the Jupyter Notebook interface in your browser. Additionally, you can access the terminal via SSH using this IP, just like before. Once your board is connected to the internet, you can install libraries using tools like PIP. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and share. See you in the next one.